Welcome to our final segment, segment four of Community in Follis. And this is the segment where I talk about these other kinds of gaming forums, like the one back there. This is a forum called Seasoned Gamers, and to some extent this is the beginning of my whole journey with video games and human values. It was the community I found playing initially the game Halo 2 with these people at Season Gamers that made me realize that there was something special going on not only in the games themselves but also in the communities that they were forming. And Season Gamers is not the only one of these communities. There are several of them that are for mature gamers or adult gamers. That is regular people, as we like to think of ourselves, who happen to like video games and happen to find video games very rewarding. So uh, I wanted to finish up by talking about how I think that that relates on the one hand to Homeric Epic, on the other hand to video games, and all of that mediated by this figure that I keep making little oblique references to, Plato, the guy who in his famous work The Republic decided that Homer needed to be thrown out of the ideal city because the people who pretended to do Homer stuff, that is, pretended to be Odysseus or pretended to be Achilles, that those people would have a hard time being actually good people because they were pretending to do bad things. In any case, my favorite way of refuting that is to talk about Season Gamers and about how we uh, at Season Gamers, members of the community, not only talk about our gaming and evaluate from a more or less ethical and community-based standpoint, people's conduct within games, that is, absolutely no cheating. The very worst thing you could possibly do as a seasoned gamer is cheat. Um, and, on, uh, and on the other hand, form communities that go way beyond the games we play. Uh, for example, um, people uh, asking for prayers and thoughts uh, when they have a family member who's ill, Recently, a seasoned gamer passed away, and uh, many of those who frequent seasoned gamers are still in mourning, which they show by a special icon that commemorates that member who passed away. So what I'm going to be talking about is the community here, the real community uh, at Seasoned Gamers, and also about um, similar communities that you'll find elsewhere across the gaming landscape on the Internet, which is finally for me a, a kind of important refutation of the idea that gaming is antisocial. Uh, I think gaming is antisocial to the same extent that Homeric Epic was antisocial for any audience member who happened just to pay rapt attention to the bard and ignored the people around him at the banqueting table. Um, it's an activity that is on the one hand uh, a private thing for those who enjoy it uh, because everybody enjoys it in his or her own way. But on the other hand, it's a very public thing and a very social thing because huge communities of gamers form together and carry on their lives together. Here we have the Family Forum at SG, and I just want to read the titles of the threads here so you can get a sense of the kinds of things that gamers talk about. For those with more than one kid, how do you do it? Jobs for a young newlywed, high chair safety in restaurants, Colin Picture Thread, a young boy named Colin, Mark Kenneth, another birth on October 30th, 2008, um, and uh, some pictures of Halloween zippers for a um, forum member named Black Zipper, pictures of his children. So as you can see, they're just the same things that regular people talk about on social occasions uh, for people of our age, mostly our kids. Now, it would be very easy, of course, to say, all right, why does it matter that they're gamers? People are social in a lot of contexts. Are the games having any effect on this? I would say that, in fact, they are in the same way that Hero Cult gives birth to a new kind of community in ancient Greece and to the polis of ancient Greece, and people come together around Hero Cult. They here, through gaming, have the opportunity to come together around characters that they find compelling the same way the ancient Greeks found uh, Odysseus and Achilles compelling. Um, and I think one need only think about the huge cultural firestorm, if you will, over characters like Luke Skywalker, who's now uh, a very important character in games as well. And then, I don't know if you noticed, but when Halo 3 came out, there was a very large amount of hype, some of it generated by Microsoft, but of course a lot of the hype around Achilles is generated by the barbs. So, 
the thing that we need to look at most of all is the question of whether pretending to be these people, these characters in adventure video games, is something that provides that kind of cultural material that allows people to come together and have a family forum. And perhaps more importantly, to bring younger gamers along. Some of these kids who are being talked about in the family forum are going to play video games. And the question is going to be, all right, what values are they taking in through the video games? Plato would say, well, they shouldn't because they'll inevitably play somebody bad. Aristotle, 50 years later, in his Poetics, in his great defense of tragedy, says that, in fact, no. If you pretend to be bad and you pretend to be good, you learn better about why you should choose to be good. That's part of what he called catharsis. And although he leaves it unstated, it's clear that he is coming from the polis of Athens, which has tragedy as a kind of cultural mainstay, tragedy which follows on from the epics of Homer. Obviously, that's a completely different topic, but this basic idea of interaction as pretending to be, pretending to be a character who has a certain set of values with which you can play, the same way the Homeric bards played with the values of Achilles and Odysseus, that forms communities, and that's what we have here at Seasoned Gamers. It's what we have all over the Internet in the communities of people who play adventure video games. And so what I want to leave you with at the end of this last segment of this last module is that gaming is something that we need to talk about in a richer way. We need to talk about it in a Homeric way. We need to talk about it in a Platonic way. We need to talk about it in terms of education and in terms of business, in terms of communication, in terms of psychology and sociology, in terms of ethics. All of the things that we think of as being a kind of rich cultural discourse are something that we need to apply to gaming. Okay, so what have we learned about Homer, which is at least nominally a huge part of what this course is? And I say nominally, ironically, obviously, it is what this course is about. It's about learning how the bards of Homer created their own cultural material and seeing that through the lens of what we're doing today. Well, I think what we've learned about Homer is that what's going on today with these communities of gamers is something that analogously went on in ancient Greece. Does it mean that Plato was wrong uh, completely? Well, no, he said many other things besides what he said about Homer. Um, but he was a little bit pessimistic, I think. And he had every right to be. His city had just lost a cataclysmic war and was only gradually coming back. And a lot of Athenians were pessimistic. Plato blames it on Homer. He was probably wrong to do that. But he gives us in the process an interesting, if problematic, way of looking at what community and polis have to do with interactive fiction, to give it a very broad name that applies both to Homeric epic and to adventure video games. So what we've learned about ancient Greece, what we've learned about Homer is they were kind of the same as us and kind of different. And if we want to really understand them, we have to use all the means at our disposal, and that includes video games.